Hi friends, peace be with you. Welcome to Sunday Mass with Children. We are so glad that you can join us on this adventure to learn more about our faith. Thank you for sharing your amazing artwork with us week after week on Little Faith Steps. The entries from our local and international friends are colourful and encouraging. We are always inspired by your sharing and beautiful artwork. Keep them coming. Hi kids! Last week we learned that prayer draws us closer to Jesus, our friend, who gives us the strength to overcome our challenges. Today, we will learn more about fasting. Let's begin with a prayer and a song to Jesus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this season of Lent, a time for us to turn away from the bad and do good. Jesus, give us the strength to overcome our sins. Holy Spirit, guide us to walk in the light of Christ. In Jesus' name we pray, Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Let us sing to God, who is loving and forgiving. Time to bring out your Bibles. Pause now and go get it, and we'll see you soon. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31 reads: So, whether you eat or drink, or whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God. Now this Bible verse teaches us to give thanks to God for all that He has given us. Many times we take our food, 
things and comforts of life for granted. We eat more than we should, buy more than we need, or use more than really necessary. But what does fasting have to do with this? Let's find out more. Do you smell that? Smell what? I don't smell anything. That? I'm sure it's right chicken. I'm so hungry. Why? Have you not eaten yet? I'm fasting, you know, because it's Friday of Lent. We've only eaten one bun. What? Why are you fasting? Fasting is only for 18 to 59 year olds. You mean I fasted for nothing? Oh, man. Well, well, I mean, it's not for nothing. Fasting and abstinence can help you be more disciplined and it brings you closer to God. And, you know, our bodies may not be strong enough right now to fast, but we can do it in other ways. Like how? Like, maybe you could spend less time on your phone, spend more time praying, or you can just use less hurtful words and then replace them with encouraging and kind ones. I get it now. I still smell the fried chicken and I'm starving. Come on, let's go get some food. And since you're actually not 14 yet, you don't have to abstain from meat either. I don't? Yes! Isn't it wonderful? Let's find that fried chicken. Lent is a time to walk away from our bad habits and be renewed or made new in the love and joy of God. We all love Jesus, but sometimes we do things that make Him sad and that separates us from His love. When we fast, we are giving up something that we like or enjoy to repent for our wrongdoing. Imagine if you have to say no to your favourite food. Ice cream, sweets, burger, fries, fried chicken. Or no to your favourite TV show 
or mobile game. I wonder how you would feel. It's difficult, right? I understand. I love my food too, and I love using my favorite apps. You would feel upset, grumpy, and you will probably think about it all day long. It is in these times that we need Jesus to give us the strength to overcome our temptations. Like how physical exercise makes our body stronger, fasting strengthens our will. If we say no to the small things, gradually we'll be able to say no to the things that cause us to sin. In this way, we can do things that give glory to God, just as the Bible tells us. Fasting and abstinence help us to practice humility because we know we need God and we can't do anything on our own. We practice self-control and moderation because it strengthens our will to do what is right. Fasting and abstinence also unites our sufferings with Christ and those who suffer from hunger in the world. Let's find out more about fasting and abstinence. Catholics aged 18 to 59 years old are to fast during Ash Wednesday and Good Friday. We are to eat in considerably smaller portions than usual. A good guide is to have one full meal and two half meals, with no snacks in between. Catholics aged 14 and above are to abstain from meat on all Fridays in the year and on Ash Wednesday and Good Friday. Children, while you need not fast or abstain from meat, you can still give up other things. You can choose to say no to your favourite food. You can reduce your screen time and spend time in prayer. Or you can fast from anger by being patient with the other person. This week, think about what you can give up or do more of so that you can work towards a renewed you. Don't forget to accompany your fast with prayer and good works. Let us now listen to a story of a saint who lived a simple life because all she needed was Jesus. At seven years old, Saint Teresa of Avila and her brother tried to travel far away to be martyrs for Christ. Their uncle found them and brought them home. Theresa was always attracted to God, but struggled to grow closer to Him. She indulged in fashion and gossip with her friends. So her father sent her to live in a convent. The sisters in the convent showed Theresa how much Jesus loved her. Soon, she became a sister too. She also found a new friend in St. Joseph, always asking him to pray for her. People often visited Theresa to gossip and give her fancy presents. They distracted her from praying and growing closer to Jesus. So she went away from the convent to pray. In the silence, she heard Jesus speaking to her. God gave Theresa a mission to start a new convent named after St. Joseph. There, the sisters gave up gossip, delicious food and nice clothes for Jesus. They prayed alone ate simple meals and wore plain clothes. These habits helped them to focus on Jesus. Saint Teresa of Avila gave up everything that blocked her way to Jesus, saying, God alone is enough. Saint Teresa of Avila was transformed after knowing Jesus. She was determined to give up anything to stay close to Jesus. She is indeed a role model for us to work towards sainthood. Let us sing this song and tell Jesus that we need Him in everything that we do. Lord, I come, I confess, bowing here, I find my rest without you.
sin runs deep, your grace is small, where grace is found, is where you are, where you are, Lord, I week's activities, go to our Facebook page, Little Faith Steps. Like our page and share your works in the comments section with us. We can't wait to see them. It is now time to set up your altar table and prepare for Holy Mass. Take a moment now to get these items and see you in a while. Oh, don't forget to take a photo and post it on Facebook or Instagram with the hashtag Catholic Mars at Home. Let us now listen to what Auntie Estella has to share with us in one mass minute. From the dawn of time, people have expressed their love for God by giving Him their best. Farmers would offer up the first and finest of their crops. Herdsmen would offer their fattest young animals. We call these offerings sacrifices. This comes from the Latin words sacer and facere, to make holy. Our Jewish forefathers sacrificed lambs to thank God for his blessings, or to say sorry for the things they had done wrong. Jesus offered himself on the cross as a sacrifice to take away the sins of the world. He wanted to make us holy again. We remember this moment at every Mass when Father raises the host and tells us to behold the Lamb of God. Did you know that God invites us? to offer ourselves to Him too? St. Paul told us to be a living sacrifice by striving to do and say only what is good and true. This will help us to grow in holiness, to become just like Jesus. Thank you, Auntie Estella. Let us now settle down, sit in front of your altar table, take a moment to be silent and prepare for Holy Mass. Welcome, my brothers and sisters in Christ, to the Holy Mass with children. Thank you for joining us to sing songs of praise and to learn more about fasting and how it brings us closer to God. There's nothing like giving God our hands and our voices to worship Him as our loving Father. Let us now worship the Lord together on the second Sunday of Lent, 28th February 2021. We offer up this Mass for those experiencing difficult times that they may trust in God's plan for them. 
Join us in singing the processional hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. And coming before the altar of God, as we celebrate this second Sunday in Lent, as we enter deeper into the desert of our Lent, let us continue to ask God for His tender mercy especially the times when we have failed to respond to God's prompting and call to be more generous, to be more loving and more forgiving. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. Let us pray. O God, who have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son, be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly by your word, that with spiritual sight made pure, we may rejoice to behold your glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. God put Abraham to the test. Abraham, Abraham, he called. Here I am, he replied. Take your son, God said, your only child Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him as a burnt offering on a mountain I will point out to you. 
When they arrived at the place God had pointed out to him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood. Then he bound his son Isaac and put him on the altar on top of the wood. Abraham stretched out his hand and seized the knife to kill his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven. Abraham, Abraham, he said. I am here, he replied. Do not raise your hand against the boy, the angel said. Do not harm him, for now I know you fear God. You have not refused me your son, your only son. Then looking up, Abraham saw a ram caught by its horns in a bush. Abraham took the ram and offered it as a burnt offering in place of his son. The angel of the Lord called Abraham a second time from heaven. I swear by my own self, it is the Lord who speaks. Because you have done this, because you have not refused me your son, your only son, I will shower blessings on you. I will make your descendants as many as the stars of heaven and the grains of sand on the seashore. Your descendants shall gain possession of the gates of their enemies. All the nations of the earth shall bless themselves by your descendants as a reward for your obedience. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will walk in the presence of the Lord in the A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. With God on our side, who can be against us? Since God did not spare his own son, but gave him up to benefit us all, we may be certain after such a gift that he will not refuse anything he can give. Could anyone accuse those that God has chosen? When God acquits, could anyone condemn? Could Jesus Christ? No, he not only died for us, he rose from the dead, and there, at God's right hand, he stands and pleads for us. The Word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain where they could be alone by themselves. There in their presence, he was transfigured. His clothes became dazzlingly white, whiter than any earthly bleacher could make them. Elijah appeared to them with Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. Then Peter spoke to Jesus. Rabbi, he said, it is wonderful for us to be here. So let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. He did not know what to say. They were so frightened. And a cloud came, covering them in shadow. And there came a voice from the cloud, this is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Then suddenly, when they looked round, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they came down the mountain, he warned them to tell no one what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. They observed the warning faithfully, though among themselves they discussed what rising from the dead could mean. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So my dear friends, for those of you who know us Franciscans, you know that we Franciscans after St. Francis of Assisi, we love nature, we love animals. And so in all our friaries, friaries are where we stay, uh, we have got many pets, we have got fishes, we have got dogs. In this friary at Greccio, we have got three cats. Uh, they're all very cute, a little bit stubborn, but all very cute. Um, we have also got seven chicks. Yes, you heard me right, seven chicks. We got them about a month and a half ago. They were so cute, now they're getting a little bit bigger. Uh, but they're just so lovable. We just enjoy watching them feed and watching them play with each other. And I think there is something beautiful about engaging nature. Some of our friends have asked us, what do you want your chickens for? I said, chickens is for laying eggs. Lah. So we're going to have them to lay eggs for us because we fries eat a lot of eggs. Um, and then they ask, what happens after three years when they no longer lay eggs? Are you going to make them like become chicken stew? And we're like, um, well, we shall see. We don't know whether we can kill them or not after we have been with them for three years. And I think that's the question sometimes we ask for our first reading. How Abraham was able to lift up that knife to kill his beloved son. Because sometimes when we have affection for something or someone, we find it very hard to part with it or to even sacrifice it. And some even ask, how come God is so cruel? Asking, Abraham to sacrifice his own son. And so we have to go back to the times of Abraham. So Abraham was a very long time ago, right? And at that time, it was actually quite common in the various religions of that time to actually sacrifice humans and even sacrifice children. So this kind of a testing uh, was not uncommon. yeah. But God knew that he was not like the other gods. This was merely a test because God did not demand blood from Abraham or from Abraham's son. So this was merely a test, a testing of faith. And sometimes we wonder, why does 
God put us to the test. And that's always been the question. Does God lead us into temptation, like what we pray in the Our Father? And some people say, well, if we are put into the test, into temptation, then we actually know how strong our faith is, whether we have the virtues necessary to walk our spiritual life, to show our love for God. I know it's not easy, which is why we have a whole lifetime to train our virtues of patience, of love, of forgiveness. Um, so we can always start, Lent is a very good time to start. Yeah? So we can always fast, not just from food, but we can fast from like angry words or, or angry gestures. Let's come back to our readings. Now Jesus, we know, today was a very special event. It's the event of the transfiguration. We heard that his clothes became very white, um, and then the disciples became very afraid, and then they saw Moses and Elijah talking with Jesus. What could the two of them talk to Jesus about? It could be about the coming suffering of Jesus and his death. And so Jesus was going to his passion, his death. Do you think that made Jesus quite afraid? And which is why there needs to be an affirmation, a confirmation to double confirm what? Jesus' identity, who Jesus is. Because when we know who we are, then we know what's our purpose on earth. And what was today's message? Today's message is this cloud that came from heaven and it spoke, and it is God the Father speaking. What did God the Father say? It says, this is my son, the beloved. Who was God the Father talking to? He was talking to the disciples to tell them, hey, this is my son and he's my beloved. But do you remember last week's gospel? Ha, huh, I think you forgot already, right? Last week, what happened? Last week was Jesus in the desert being tempted. So Jesus had a form of testing there and he's going to his testing again in his passion and death. But what last week's gospel did not include, last week we heard from chapter 1, verse 12 to 15. But do you know what happened in verse 11, the verse just before uh, the temptation in the desert? Ah, let me refresh your memory if you have not read Mark chapter 1. If you don't believe me, go to Mark chapter 1, just the very beginning, and take a look. Before the temptation in the desert, what happened to Jesus? Jesus was baptized in the Jordan. Do you remember that? And then after Jesus came out of the water, what happened? That's the important message. In all the other Gospels, we also have God the Father saying, this is my Son, the Beloved. But in Mark, it's a special one. Only in Mark, it is God the Father referring to Jesus specifically, saying to Jesus what? You are my Son, the Beloved. Almost telling Jesus his identity, who he is. And my dear children, and my dear friends at home, only when we know who we are and who we are in God and for God, then can we go about the testing, the difficulties, the trials of life. Because if we know that we are beloved, what does beloved mean? That means that God looking at us, He already loves us. It is because of love that we have been created. They have been created into existence. Just like us looking at the chickens and we're very happy. They, have, they haven't started laying eggs yet and we're already very happy. So sometimes we think that we need to do this, do that, we need to lay eggs, then God will be happy with us. But no, God just looking at us and He's pleased with us. Why? Because we are His creation. He made us personally, each and every one of us. And so let these words of belovedness, that we are loved in and of ourselves, and can you imagine if we are able to see that of ourselves, then we are able to see that of others, especially those that irritate us, annoy us, like our brothers and sisters at home sometimes, or our classmates. And to say that, hey, if I'm sometimes naughty, and I refuse to forgive, and sometimes I'm doing things um, rebellious and all that, and God still loves me and invites me to repentance and to be more life-giving, then I look at my brother who is always irritating me, God loves him too and forgives him. 
and which is why I can also forgive my brother. Not only seven times, but 70 times seven, which is many, many times. And it's only then can we walk through our difficulties, our trials, our testing, because we know that we are loved and we are never alone. God is always with us in our troubles and our difficulties. So through this Lent, my dear friends, let us allow God to shower us, to overshadow us with His grace and mercy and love, and to walk this Lent towards passion, death, but most importantly, the resurrection to new life. And let us live out this new life now. And my dear friends, with Christians of all ages, let us now profess what we believe in. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended in heaven. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of everlasting. Amen. As we gather as a faith community, we surrender ourselves in loving obedience to God, confident that our prayers of intercession will be heard. Our response is, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For your Holy Father, Pope Francis, Archbishop William, all priests and clergy, let the Spirit of God be upon them as they lead the Church in repentance and in proclaiming God's kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For leaders of all nations, that they will conscientiously strive to build bridges of peace within and between nations, and that they will unite in a just distribution of the COVID vaccine, which meets the needs of all, including the poorest people and nations. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the Church, that in the Sunday Assembly, and in our daily lives, we listen deeply to God's Son, the Beloved, and that our lives will be transformed by this encounter. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the sick and all facing terminal illness, that through the patient and loving support of friends, family, and professional caregivers, they will be touched by and come to know the ever-present and ever-loving Son of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who have lost loved ones recently, that they also find solace, comfort, and healing from the beloved Son through the compassionate love and care of family, friends, and the faith community. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the intentions we hold silently in our hearts, and those who have asked for our prayers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, you are the true light that enlightens the world. As your son Jesus showed his face to the disciples, show us your face in each person we meet and your will in each task before us. We ask this in Jesus' name. 
。アーメン。Praise, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. May this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, cleanse us of our faults and sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the Paschal festivities through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after he had told the disciples of his coming death, on the holy mountain he manifested to them his glory to show even by the testimony of the law and the prophets, that the passion leads to the glory of the resurrection. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without end, we acclaim. the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. 
do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form of divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am I'm not worthy, worthy that you should enter, enter under, under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul, and my shall, soul be healed. shall be healed. And dear friends at home, this time of spiritual communion is a time to remember that we are receiving the beloved Son of the Father because we are the beloved sons and daughters in the Son. And during this time, let us continue to allow our hearts to be open to God and to believe that we are beloved, just like Jesus is. We invite all those watching to make an act of spiritual communion with a spirit of gratefulness, thanking God for His infinite love and sacrifice. With humble and contrite hearts, let us express our desire to invite Jesus into our souls. My Jesus, I believe that You are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. As we receive these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O Lord, for allowing us, while still on earth, to be partakers even now of the things of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. 
and with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. Bless your faithful, we pray, O Lord, with a blessing that endures forever. And keep them faithful to the gospel of your only begotten Son, so that they may always desire and at last attain that glory whose beauty he showed in his own body to the amazement of his apostles. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.